Hello, YTPC. Three Rivers, Steve. Um, I'm coming on today with response to the five tobacco challenge and three pipe challenge. I was very kindly nominated by a number of people, but when you say challenge, it's more like a challenge and a half for me. I, I sort of try to reckon my tobaccos and pipes. Anyway, I finally I think I've come up with a, a kind of solution. So if you just bear with me. Firstly, tackling the, um, the five tobaccos. Um, I was nominated kindly by Talking Tommy, Daniel and Michael of Brown Brothers and Briar, and Carl Newton Piper. If there's anyone I haven't mentioned that have nominated me, I apologise. Um, I'm well behind on the following up on the videos right now. But to go into the tobaccos, first category, everyday smoke. I I virtually change my tobacco, my everyday smoke if I and I don't smoke every day. Um, to probably 52 times a year. However, um, the one that I was smoking when I was putting this together that week was the fourth generation 1882, uh, Eric Stokerby. It's an English blend, uh, Kentucky, Latakia, um, Oriental Turkish Virginia, I suppose you could call it a, an English when some may say if it's got Orientals in there, it's a Balkan. Either way, it, everything just marries perfectly uh, for me. And it's a constant smoke, there's no surprises, it burns all the way through. And when I finally get back onto the river, I was, uh, I will, that is the tobacco I will be smoking. Over the counter blend, there's only two come to mind. Condor in whichever form, long cut or ready rubbed. I do prefer the ready, ready rub. To me it's perfect putting in your pipe. However, uh, my Molly for this. My preference for the over counter blend would be uh, Saint Bruno. And generally in the, the flake form, although I don't I couldn't differentiate the difference between ready rubbed or flake. However, I feel that I can uh, quantify the number, amount of tobacco I'm smoking with either a flake or a flake and a half. So it, it, for me, it just uh, I can see where I'm going with it rather than all of a sudden it's on the, the bottom of the, the pouch. So it would be St. Bruno flake. But at the moment, where I get my over the counter blend at the local supermarket, you, you say one choice. Hobson's choice and that is the ready rub, which is great. Friday night weekend blend. I don't, yeah, I'm tr trying to get in that mindset. Um, I probably, one of the tobaccos, and again, these, by next week, these could all, I mean, all change, probably, would be the Rebo plug, uh, which is, um, they call it a plug, but it's more like a crumble cake. Um, oh, I've got some here. Yes, I have. Not a lot left of it. So Virginia and Burley. I don't know if you can see that. That was a plug, <laughs> but it breaks up so easily. And if I'm to sort of analyse it visually, I'd say it's more like a. Although it doesn't smell like it, it, it looks like its texture is very much like a cigar leaf. And that's what I'm I'm smoking in my pipe at the moment is the, the revolt plug. Now, one that's a little uh, bit more challenging is my once a year, maybe a little more often, and it's a blend, I've got three blends called Three Rivers, after, named after three different rivers, and one I call the Nith, and it's uh, one option was actually put together with the help of a gentleman, Callum, uh, at uh, Termas Tobacconist in Chester. And he did a little actual video on it, which I'll put a, a link to below. And I won't spoil you for the content, other than it's all 
and Galway St. Hoggis. You alright, Molly? You're looking at me like, yeah, talking to a little box in the bossy. I am. Be very patient. So, I'll put that in the bottom for you to see the ingredients of that. Now, I'm not sure if the original question was the tobacco to impress people with. I don't think we'd ever do that or try to do that. But I will say the tobacco that impressed me. Um, and it's one I smoked probably last year is the most I, you know, most of the tobacco I smoke most of. That's Samuel Goweth Commonwealth, which I think is 50-50 um, Virginia and Latakia. The Latakia um, is healthily steamed uh, before the mixture, but it's a perfect blend. I really, really enjoy it. Uh, so they're, they're my five tobaccos uh, I would like to nominate. Um, with regards uh, my pipes, I'll just come to that if you'll bear with me. Slicing up the bowl again. I'm pouring myself a uh, cabbage stock chocolate. The weather's been fine here. I mean, the fr frost in the morning and ice. Molly and I have been out into right across the fields there into the back of beyond. And uh, we're enjoying it, haven't we, Molly? Mm -hmm. So, my three pipes. Let me just try and write. David, trailing the woolly mammoth, nominating me for this. There might be more, I don't know, but certainly David did. My best smoking pipe. My most versatile, I'll call it. And this is a pipe I can put anything in. And I know it's going to smoke wonderfully. It's a Ben Wade. Huntsman. See with a plateau top cartridge insert there for the stem. This I guarantee no matter what I put it, it's gonna smoke put it will smoke perfectly and give me a wonderful, wonderful smoke. Tobacco's gave me a big challenge. As I say it could change tomorrow. There's so many good ones. Um, there's one of beat it's going out of uh, production now, Kendall Cream. I got a couple of tins of this last time I put an order in and that, that's been wonderful. But you know it's one of those uh, and I can pick any one of these tins here. I mean my next bowl is going to be Royal Yacht um, Peterson's. And again going back to last year my second most smoked tobacco was Rattray's Wallace Fleet. Again, I can highly recommend. So, best smoking pipe, most versatile pipe, and that is the um, Ben Wade Huntsman. Now, that's interesting. My most go to pipe is this one. I seem to be picking it up when I'm either going for a walk or I'm doing this and doing that. It's just convenient, the bowl size is just practical for uh, having a smoke, you know, it's not too, you're not committing too much time to it. And again, it's a good smoke, I've got three of these. Now, I could never work out what the numbers are, and I think, but poor eyesight, but using this, it looks like a Donegal Rocky 120. Um, they don't make this particular pipe in these dimensions anymore but they do still make the Donegal Rocky and possibly the 120 but it, it's a bit chunkier these days for whatever reason but by default it's the most abused most dependable pipe um, I have in my collection excuse me
which pipe has surprised me the most? Uh, you get new pipes, and none of the, oh, all of my pipes are my favourite pipes. One I have particularly up on a pedestal, maybe. But they all have their role in my rotation. But the pipe that surprised me the most, I think apart from any of the large bold cobs like the country gentleman that I've got, I've got two there. Um, which is the one I bought. I bought two, an apple and a billiard shape. Again, similar size bowl to this, maybe just a wee smaller. But for 30 odd, well, 32 pound, I think, sterling. I thought, I can't go wrong. I'll buy this as a utility pipe. Not really expecting a great deal from it. But, hmm, it surprised me. It's just become just a normal, wonderful smoke. And it's the Duncan Colbeck. This is the, I think you'll correct me if I'm wrong, the billiard shape, I've also got an apple shape, but the, the capacity is just right for when I'm gardening, mooching around. I've been renovating the bothy after its winter abuse, and that's all tight and weather tight now. And Outside, just got to do a bit of liquor paint inside. Well, yeah, that's the pipe that surprised me the most. The Duncan Colbeck. C A L D B E C K. Made by my smoking shop in Preston. Now, I just went on there before coming to make this video. There's none on the Colbeck range left. In fact, there's very few for the Duncan Ryers in stock, so about three or four, might be five. Well I'm sure if you spoke um, to them they will um, commission some pipes for you. But certainly the Colbeck range I wanted because of its connotation to the village uh, up in Cumbria where the famous huntsman John Peel was born. And if you've ever watched um, any of the Pith helmet matinees I've I've done with the professor. Um, there was a, a section there where uh, I didn't think it was actually singing Dear Ken Don Peel, but it ended up that way with the, with the magic of the professor's editing. Great series. I was involved in the first lockdown, and um, Uncle Phil Sellers stepped into the breach on you know uh, with the professor, and he's carried on. So they've done a great job there. If you get a chance to watch them, please do. Um, now then, I think it comes down to my nominees for these uh, categories. So again, just bear with me while I swap my out. Now, as is a tradition, I believe, I should make three nominees. Now, can I say I've gone up because I've done the two in one? I think it's only fair I can perhaps nominate five people. Not six, but five. And can I say there's no pressure, there shouldn't be any pressure, <laughs> uh, on these people. But these are my my invitation. Now, most of these pipe smokers don't actually do videos right now. But if this is that um, catalyst, just to say why why not spend five minutes just banging them out? Don't even have to show yourself on the on the camera, as you know you've seen a number of people do. But these are people I respect. And I respect their judgment, they've supported me, and if I can just give them that little bit of a go, and it's not all of them are, are novice or 
just views at this stage. There's at least one in there who's done videos a long time ago, and there's one that's not done one for a while. So with the great respect to you gentlemen, I'm just going to put it out there. If you, if you wish to, if you don't wish to, that's not a problem, is it? Right, the first nominee is a North Country Piper, Sean. He supported me with a lot of um, wonderful comments over over my 50, what might be 53 videos if I get this up. As has my second nominee, John Paul Davenport. Don't cringe, <laughs> John. Just if you can, if you've got the, the situation, then fine. I do understand there might be either professional or political reasons that you, you can't do a video. And I think everyone would understand that's not a problem. The next is Alex. Uh, dry Fly Fisher. I think it's 11. So Dry Fly Fisher 11. Alex, I'm nominating you. The next one. Grumpy the one and only and I know he like me has got a great appreciation for the countryside and country sports and working and training his dogs so Tony there's a little shout out there for you if you wish and the last one is a gentleman again I've got, we've, we've spoken on the phone we've communicated through emails and on comments and I have one great respect for this gentleman and um, it's Rich Tringer Piper. Now I know he's taking a bit of a sabbatical and he may wish to carry. I know he's busy. I know, I just know he's busy. But if this just gets you back in the saddle, uh, Rich, then, then great. Now I've made, named five nominees and my suggestion is whether you want to do the five tobaccos or the three pipes or both, that's entirely up to yourselves. So I will leave that for your decision and I must you know it's straight about this is no there is no pressure or there should be no pressure I just need to sort my out one more time so there we have it ladies and gentlemen um, I don't know if you'll agree with it all I can tell you any one of those tobaccos I've mentioned uh, I'd be happy with and there's a host more <laughs> um, over here that I've smoked I've put any one out like oh crikey you know, Samuel Gowth Balkan Flake um, I say most of the, oh crikey here's another one I could, I could easily have nominated this Lakeland Dark uh, fundamentally it's a 1792 without the flavour of the, the Tolkien bean but thank you for joining me thank you for all your views uh, thank you for your subscriptions. Um, it's very encouraging, and we'll see how we go with this one. So, until the next time, thank you for joining me. Catch you again soon. Bye for now. Saying bye bye, Molly. No, okay. <laughs> Catch you later. <laughs>